Have you ever heard the phrase, everything that can go wrong will go wrong? Well, that's absolutely true when it comes to bagpipe embellishments, which is what we're talking about here today. So strap in. Let's go uh, for another episode here of Piper's Dojo TV. Ready? Let's go. Everything that can go wrong will eventually go wrong. And just because you play embellishments really well at one stage of your career does not mean things are not going to become dislodged and go awry on you a little bit later on. It's not something you're going to have permanently that's just magical and you're never going to have problems with it. There's, always, there's going to come a day where for some reason your grips just don't sound great and you don't know why. We need to be able to drill down. We need to be able to figure out what's going to go wrong. And the good news about low G oriented embellishments especially Okay, now these are difficult movements, but if we think critically about these movements, we can isolate every single possible problem with low G movement, and we can uh, figure out, you know, that exact list of possible problems, and then we can play our grip, and we know it doesn't sound right, and we can figure out which of the finite number of things is going wrong. That's right. There's only a list of a few different things that could possibly go wrong with an embellishment. Let's look at a light D throw, okay? Let's say we're coming from E, and we're going to play a light D throw, okay? Now, in the transition from the E down to the low G, which is the first step of the D throw, what are the things that can go wrong? Well, we could have a crossing noise, all right? That's basically the only possible problem there, from E to low G, a crossing noise. That's it. Okay, so that's one possible problem that could happen with the D throw. Now, Transitioning to the next step, we now have a D grace note to C. Coming from low G to C, it would be possible, I suppose, to have a weird crossing noise. Right? And it would also be possible to have a bad grace note quality. Okay, the size of the D grace note, if it were too big, it could swallow things up. Or something like that, right? So that could be something that could go wrong. So, so far we're up to three possible things. Now, it's actually not possible for anything to go wrong between C and D, right? Only one finger moves, there's no chance of a crossing noise, and we're not playing a grace note. So in order to get the D throw, in order to get that light D throw to sound nice, we just have to cover a very few finite number of things that could possibly go wrong. So in the previous episode, we talked about the baseline things that could go wrong. And so those are the baseline things. Crossing noise during the first step. We have a risk of a crossing noise and or a bad grace note in the second step. But then there's nothing in the third step that we have to worry about from a baseline perspective. Next, is the embellishment being played on the beat? That's the fourth thing that could go wrong, is that the embellishment is played in the wrong place relative to the beat. And then are all of the steps accurate and even? Well, we know the accuracy is sort of summed up by the baseline scales, but are all the steps played evenly? That's the fifth thing that could possibly be the matter, is if steps are played out of sync, like... Right? If the steps aren't played evenly, that could be bad. And then uh, the final thing, which I guess uh, gives us a sixth possible thing, is that the steps are not being played quickly enough. <coughs> we call that ASAP here at the dojo, meaning as short as possible, right? Are all the steps being played as short as possible? There you go. That's our checklist of things that you uh, that could possibly go wrong with the D-throw. So if you're not happy with the D-throw, that's what you need to look into. So if this interested you in any way, if you want to get a, hand on our, um, a handle on our free checklists that we have available for you um, for grips, tailors, and D-throws, check out the link in this video or the link in the post. And you can download a PDF document that we use here with all of our students, just kind of as a, a key exercise in really understanding what embellishments are all about. So check out those, download them. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we are going to see you in the next episode of Piper's Dojo TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.